Hey everyone and welcome to my channel, The Reader Teacher. My name's Scott. In these coming soon videos, I'll be sharing my most anticipated children's books releases for each month. This video is Series 2, Episode 9 of Coming Soon, and it previews the upcoming books for the month of September 2022. You can find my previous month's Coming Soon videos here. I'll be going through them in release date order, and where they have the same release date, then they'll be alphabetically by title. If you just want to hear about a specific book, then make sure to use the timestamps in the description below. I hope this video helps you to discover more children's books to add to your TBRs, and I'll be doing more monthly videos like this one throughout the year. So make sure to leave me a like, hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. All the links to the books that I mention in this video will also be in the description box below. So let's take a look at the books. First up is Always Clementine by Carly Sorosiak, out on the 1st of September, which tells the story of a genius mouse called Clementine, who's a genius because she can calculate pi to 69,689 places, remembers the exact moment she was born, and dreams in Latin. But when she escapes from the lab which bred her, she discovers that it's not enough to be the smartest mouse in history if she wants to survive in the real world. So together with her new human friends, she must find a way to earn her freedom, for good. Big thanks, Nosy Crow, for the finished coffee. Whoa, how excited am I to see Amari in the Great Game by B.B. Alston and Brittany Jackson coming out on the 1st of September. In this sequel to Amari and the Knight Brothers, my fiction book of 2021, we find Amari Peters, who after finding her brother and saving the entire supernatural world, is now convinced that her first full summer as a junior agent will be a breeze. But between her brother's curse worsening and the fearsome new head minister's strict anti-magician agenda, she soon has to refuse other things such as standing up for the League as its new leader. She's that busy. However, when this allows someone else to step forward with dangerous plans of their own, Amari is forced into the great game to compete to decide who will become the Knight Brother's successor and determine the future of magician kind. Huge thanks, Farshaw, for the stunning finished copy as I can't wait to visit this magical world again. Set slightly in the future, in a world where global climate laws were introduced in the year 2030, Beyond the Frozen Horizon by Nicola Penfold out on the 1st of September, is another of her brilliant, ecologically based books that gives us a glimpse into a possible dystopian future. In this one, Rory's mum is a geologist on one of these projects, and Rory is beyond excited to join her on a work trip to the Arctic, as we see the Earth thriving with wilderness status, protecting land and wildlife, and scientific organisations researching new ways to support human life sustainably. But the project isn't all that it seems, and Rory soon learns what's at stake for the people and animals that live there. Thanks Little Tiger for the finished copy. Courage in a Poem out on the 1st of September is a beautiful book of poetry for everyone. Featuring work from a wide range of contemporary poets and illustrators who bring their unique perspectives to encourage children to take joy in their identities through the topic of empowerment, this book looks at the angles of body positivity, facing fear, to celebrating heritage and individuality. Packed full of vibrant and mesmerising artwork, it's a perfect book to begin your journey into a lifelong love of poetry. Thanks Little Tiger for the gorgeous finished coffee. In Dogs of the Deadlands by Carnegie Medal winning author Anthony McGowan and illustrated by Keith Robinson, out on the 1st of September, we find ourselves in Chernobyl, 1986, where the world seems like it's coming to an end as Natasha is dragged from her bed in the middle of the night and forced to leave her puppy behind, having no idea if she'll ever return home after the nuclear accident at the number 4 reactor in the nearby power plant. Sometime later, we see pups, Misha and Bratan, who are growing up in the shadow of the ruined nuclear power plant. But can the dogs survive their harsh wilderness without humans? And can humans live without them? And will Natasha ever be reunited with her dog? Thanks Rock the Boat for the finished hardback copy. It's time to solve the mystery of the millennium in The Elemental Detectives by Patrice Lawrence out on the 1st of September. As the shepherdess brings a sleeping sickness down on the city with the destruction of society in her sights, it's up to Marcy and Robert, the Elemental Detectives, to chase the clues and face a whole host of fantastical creatures along the way to avoid catastrophe and prevent London from slumbering for all eternity. Inspired by Patrice's research into black history in Hackney, with one of the main characters being written to remember a man who was prominent in the movement to abolish slavery, this one sounds like it's going to be both magical and memorable. 
Huge thanks Scholastic for the finished copy. Also out on the 1st of September is How To Be More Hedgehog by Anne-Marie Conway, which introduces us to Lily, who has a stammer. When a video of her practicing her class presentation is uploaded onto YouTube, showing her struggles, Lily's nightmare begins, with cyberbullying, kids at school whispering, and even best friend Mia laughing behind her back. This leads Lily to only see one way out, running away to dad in Scotland and starting all over again. But Lily quickly realises that running away isn't the answer, because her stammer will follow her wherever she goes. So can she find strength in it instead? Thanks you clan for sending me a finished copy. From Corinne Getton, the author of When Life Gives You Mangoes, comes If You Read This, out on the 1st of September. In this coming of age story, we meet Brie, who when she was younger, her mama used to surprise her with treasure hunts around their island town. After she died three years ago, these became Brie's most cherished memories. But now, on her 12th birthday, her mama has another surprise. A series of letters leading Brie on one last treasure hunt, where the first letter guides her to a special place. The next urges her to unlock a secret, and the last letter will change life as she knows it. I'm really looking forward to this one, so thanks Pushkin Press for the finished copy. Catherine Johnson recounts the remarkable early life of adventurer, author and activist Alauda Equiano in her newest narrative non-fiction book, Journey Back to Freedom, out on the 1st of September. Born in what is now Nigeria in 1745, Alauda's peaceful childhood was stopped when he was captured and enslaved, aged just 11 years old. Spending many of the next 10 years at sea, he saw much of the Seven Years' War, and when he was finally able to buy his freedom, he went on to become a prominent member of the abolition movement and published one of the first books by a black African writer in 1789. This book recognises the resilience in his achievements and, after reading Race to the Frozen North about Matthew Henson, another one of Catherine's other brilliant books, I can't think of anyone better to tell these stories that everyone needs to know. Big thanks Barrington Stoke for the finished copy. Key player by Kelly Yang out on the 1st of September is the fourth instalment in the wonderful Front Desk series in which football fever is in the air and Mia Tang is rearing to go. When her two worlds come together with Team China and Team USA progressing to the FIFA Women's World Cup final to face each other, Mia is more than excited. But less exciting is when a low grade in PE class means she might not make it to journalism class that summer. But as always, Mia will do whatever it takes to achieve her goal, so she plans to track down the two women's teams, interview them and write an A-grade article for PE instead. It's not so easy though, finding professional athletes in Pasadena or bringing two identities together, even during a game, and she'll have to face prejudice, discrimination and her own fears along the way, as well as the return of Mr Yao. Thanks Knights of for the finished copy. Another one for the 1st of September is The Last Storyteller by Donna Barba Higuera, in which a girl named Petra Pena wants nothing more than to be a storyteller like her abuelita. But Petra's world is ending because Earth will soon be destroyed by a comet, and only a few hundred scientists and their children, among them Petra and her family, have been chosen to journey to a new planet. They are the ones who must carry on the human race. Hundreds of years later, Petra wakes to this new planet and the discovery that she is the only person who remembers Earth. A sinister collective has taken over the ship during its journey, bent on erasing the sins of humanity's past. They have systematically purged the memories of all aboard, or purged them altogether. Petra alone now carries the stories of our past, and with them any hope for our future. Can she make them live again? Thanks Piccadilly Press for sending me a finished copy. Who would you trust to save the world, a boy or a billionaire? Well that's the choice that has to be made in The Light Thieves, the first in a new action-packed eco-adventure series by Helena Duggan, out on the 1st of September, where the Earth has shifted on its axis and a mysterious dark mark has appeared on the sun, meaning that the whole world is in peril. But billionaire tech genius Howard Hansom has a plan. When Green's sister goes missing, he's convinced she has run off to Hansom's new city to help save the world. But when Green and his two friends, Jeffrey and Shelley, track her there, they find that nothing is quite as it seems. Why is everything so secret? Where is the mysterious Area 13? And what does Howard Hansen want with all the people he has enticed to live in his city? The days are getting darker, but what's really happening to the sun? I'm looking forward to finding out, so thanks Osborne for the finished copy. 
Step into the world of Tiananmen Og in The Lost Girl King by Catherine Doyle out on the 1st of September. In this one, Amy and Liam Bell have been packed off to stay at Grant's house in the wilds of Connemara for the summer. Out for a walk on the first morning of their holiday, they trace the flight of a hawk to a nearby waterfall only to watch the bird disappear through it. Intrigued, the children follow and soon realise they've discovered the entrance to Tiananmen Og, the legendary land of eternal youth. But they've been tricked, as almost immediately, Liam is captured by a troop of headless horsemen who take him to Tarlok, the ruling sorcerer, who is seeking the bones of a human child for a sinister new spell. Big thanks, Bloomsbury, for the finished copy. There's so much to love about October. Halloween, pumpkin everything, and magic especially magic. But for nervous young witch, Clemmie, in The October Witches by Jennifer Classen, also out on 1st of September, this month might see the stars descend on her for the first time, bringing with them a whole month of chaotic new power. She spent 12 years watching her mum, aunts and cousin receive their October power, and knows that, for the Merlins, magic can get very messy. And there are those who want to harness their magic and make it last beyond October. It's a bold experiment, until Clemmy and her coven find themselves in mortal danger. What price must be paid for magic that never ends, or for having magic at all? Thanks you clan for the finished copy. Safe by Vanessa Harbour out on the 1st of September is the sequel to the beautifully written Flight published four years ago, and rejoins Jacob and Kizzy in the chaotic last days of World War II, who are now tricked into a journey that goes very wrong. They escape, but must hide in an extraordinary empty mansion which shelters not only 40 abandoned horses but a small band of lost children displaced by the war too. Now Kizzy and Jacob face a terrifying task. Can they get them all home? Big thanks Firefly Press for the proof copy. The Spell Tailors by James Nicholl out on the 1st of September is the newest fantasy novel from the author of the Apprentice Witch series in which Hen dreams of becoming a spell tailor, stitching magic into clothing like his beloved Nana. But thanks to New Factory, spell tailors are struggling. His Uncle Bertie's fancy shop has shut down, and when he, Aunt Lucia and stuck-up cousin Connie move in, it's a disaster for all the family. Then, Hen stumbles upon a new kind of stitch, one which causes Nana and Bertie to ban him from sewing. What is the power of the stitch that can sew memories into clothes, and could it be the very thing to save them all? Thanks, Chicken House, for the golden finished copy. Stories of Peace and Kindness for a Better World by Elizabeth Laird and Mir Doctamini, out on the 1st of September, showcases seven wise and wonderful stories from lands such as Afghanistan, Sudan, Syria, Ethiopia, Palestine, Yemen, and a rare story from China to inspire hope and reconciliation. Collected and told by an author with lived experience of many of the cultures featured in this book, they include stories of tribes making peace with each other without any fighting, rich and poor coming together to find the true value of kindness, and the action of forgiveness playing its part in the reunion of a father and daughter. Big thanks Otterberry Books for the finished copy. An epic tale of trees of power and a world under threat awaits in The Tree Keepers by Kieran Larwood, the author of the best-selling Five Realms series, out on the 1st of September, in which Liska lives in Arbaven, a city surrounded an extraordinary tree that gives all those living there special powers. As a shapeshifter, Liska is training as a warrior. When she discovers that the tree is under threat, it is her duty to act, but she can't convince anyone to listen to her. So with Lug, whose power over earthworms is dismissed as useless, and a ghost girl, Eloan, she goes on an epic journey to defeat the worst threat their world has ever known. Huge thanks, Faber, for the hardback finished copy. The year is 1897 in a dark and dangerous Victorian world in The Whispering by Hayley Hoskins out on the 1st of September and Peggy Devner can speak with ghosts. She hides her gift from those afraid of a girl with such powers, terrified of the secrets the dead could reveal through her. But when her best friend is accused of murdering her rich mistress, Peggy knows only she, a Whispering, can save her. As she escapes to her uncle's psychic emporium in the city, she starts to seek out new ghosts to help her solve Sally's case. Yet time is running out, and each step towards uncovering the truth also brings Sally one step closer to the gallows. Thanks Puffin for the finished copy. Juno Dawson's debut picture book, You Need to Chill, out on the 1st of September, and illustrated by Laura Hughes, 
is a witty and fun-filled rhyming story about family, identity and allyship with its message of love and inclusivity that shines through on every page. When Bill can't be found at school one day, the imaginations of the other children run wild. Is he on holiday? Is he lost in the park? Has he been eaten by a shark? It's up to Bill's sister to explain. Thanks Farshaw for the finished coffee. The Zebra's Great Escape Out on the 1st of September is a new picture book about bravery, friendship and the importance of taking action by Catherine Rundell and illustrated by Sarah Ogilvie in which we meet Mink who doesn't believe in rules. She loves running wild and free. So when a zebra appears in the square where she lives and she finds out that his parents have been captured by the evil Mr. Spit, she knows that it's up to her to help lead him to the beginning of a grand adventure to rescue a whole menagerie of animals, an adventure that will take all of Mink's courage and determination. Catherine Rundell is one of my absolute favourite authors, so I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on a copy. Take a trip to the ancient past to come face to face with legendary dinosaurs such as T-Rex, Stegosaurus and Triceratops in Tales of the Prehistoric World by Callie Moore and Becky Thorns out on the 6th of September. Find out about jaw-dropping paleontological discoveries including dinosaurs that turned into gemstones, pterosaurs the size of aeroplanes and the island of the last mammoths. Big thanks Neon Squid for sending me a finished copy of this awesome book. On the 24th of November 1859, Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species was first published, selling out almost immediately. However, he couldn't have done it without the support, encouragement and advice from those who believed in him. None more so than Joseph Hooker, his friend and fellow collector, who supported and helped Darwin when he didn't dare ask anyone else. Hooker too had his own adventures and made his own discoveries, many of which not only aided Darwin but went on to change what the world knew about plants. Becoming head of Royal Botanic Gardens Q, he came to be one of the world's most influential botanists. Publishing in partnership with Royal Botanic Gardens Q, Darwin and Hooker by Alexandra Stewart and Joe Todd Stanton, out on the 15th of September, tells the story of one of the greatest friendships to happen to science, and will show children how teamwork, curiosity, openness and trust can be the greatest tools a scientist will ever need, and that they might even help you to change the world. Thanks Bloomsbury for the finished copy. From best-selling and award-winning creators Emma Carroll and Lauren Child comes The Little Match Girl Strikes Back, a powerful feminist reworking of the Hans Christian Andersen classic based on real-life events, out on the 15th of September. In this one, Briddy works hard to feed her family, selling matches on the streets of Victorian London. After an incident leaves her with only three matches left, the magical strike of each one sees her tumble into visions of a brighter future. Realising she has the power to change her own fortune, she leads the match factory workers out on strike, achieving the remarkable through their unity and courage. Thanks Simon & Schuster for the proof copy. Beautiful illustrations combined with poetic verse in the world of the tiger in this beautifully factual picture book Lord of the Forest by Caroline Pitcher and Jackie Morris out on the 15th of September. Watch Tiger as he is born fluffy and soft with his eyes tight shut, opening them to find out that everything is exciting. And as Tiger grows up and develops the skills he needs to set out into the world, he soon discovers his role as Lord of the Forest. Huge thanks Grafeg for the finished copy. This whole book is the perfect package. Set in an alternative Britain where shadows have stopped showing people's shapes but instead reveal their true selves, the Shadow Order by Rebecca F. John out on the 15th of September is a new fantasy novel with strong environmental and political themes. As a group of teenage friends plan to risk all and watch the winter sunrise over Copperwell in defiance of the Shadow Order, they witness a mysterious woman shouting a dire warning before being arrested, beaten and dragged away in handcuffs. This leads them on an extraordinary series of dangerous adventures as they discover more about the disturbance in the natural world surrounding their city as they battle to save it and start to recognise their truest selves. Thanks Firefly Press for the proof copy. Also out on 15th of September is That's Nice Love by Owen Gent, a gorgeous picture book about the importance of looking up, paying attention and sharing adventures together. Imagine a trip to the park with butterflies and snakes and monkeys and a giant leopard. It sounds amazing. But imagine missing it all because you're distracted. 
Well, that's what happens to the child in this story, whose adult is always spending too much time scrolling on their phone and not staying in the present, leaving them to feel like even though they're right there in front of them, they sometimes feel so far away and miss out on the everyday magic happening around them. Big thanks Book Island for sending me a finished copy. The Ultimate Guide to Growing Dragons by Andy Shepard and Sarah Oglevy out on the 15th of September is the companion title to their best-selling The Boy Who Grew Dragons series. In this one, Thomas, the boy who grew dragons, thinks that he is officially an expert at caring for them. He knows all the tricks for training them, nurturing dragon fruit seedlings and diffusing dragon poo. So he has this brilliant idea. He and his friends have got to get all their dragon expertise down in one easy to read place for them and anyone else who might find themselves growing dragons. The only problem is Thomas's friends are all currently scattered all around the world. Perhaps though, if they can get their heads together, they can figure this all out together and create the most brilliant ultimate guide ever together. Of course, what they don't realize is they still have a lot to learn about dragons. Thanks Piccadilly Press for the finished copy. From Cressida Cowell, the best-selling author of the How to Train Your Dragon and Wizards of Once series, comes an out-of-this-world new adventure with Which Way to Anywhere out on the 15th of September. K2 O'Hero is a seemingly ordinary boy. After all, he and his twin sister, Isabird, have been sworn to keep their family's magical history a secret. But K2 has a secret gift. He draws maps of worlds that are beyond the wildest of imaginations. Worlds with 600 moons, burning rivers and dark, twisty jungles alive with plants that hunt by the smell of fear. But what K2 doesn't know is that the maps he draws are real. When their baby sister, Anapek, is kidnapped, will K2 be able to use his gift to find a crossing point into one of those worlds and embark on a daring rescue mission? Big thanks Hatchet for the proof copy. Join brilliant young naturalist Dara McAnulty on her journey through a year in the life of birds in a wild child's book of birds out on the 15th of September and illustrated by Barry Falls. This beautiful book takes you on a tour of the birds you'll find in Britain and Ireland where you can find out what birds do in each season, learn about birdsong, beaks, nests and eggs, the science of flight and migration, what to grow to attract different birds to your garden and what foods to put out on your bird table. Huge thanks Macmillan for sending me a stunning finished copy. Am I Made of Stardust by Dr. Maggie Darren Pocock out on the 29th of September is a brand new question and answer book for curious readers everywhere. Packed full of fabulous facts, mind-blowing insights and engaging explanations from the space scientists about whether there are rainbows on other planets and what would happen if you fell into a black hole to would your phone get signal in space and what dinner tastes like on the International Space Station. It guides you around the galaxy and beyond. Big thanks Buster Books for the finished copy. Welcome to Elston Fright, a forgotten town where witches lurk, sea monsters roam and a girl called Corpse is on the hunt for answers in The Girl, The Ghost and The Lost Name by Reese Carter out on the 29th of September. This is because Corpse is a ghost. She didn't ask to be one and she doesn't remember anything from her life. So when she discovers that there's a powerful treasure which could give her all the answers to what she's lost, she sets off to find it. But on her journey across the stormy sea, she must battle magic, monsters and a cruel figure from her past as well as the witches who want the treasure too. Can she get it first? Thanks Esborn for the proof copy and this is so different from anything else I've read before. After being a big fan of Julia and the Shark I'm delighted to see Layla and the Blue Fox by Kieran Millwood Hargrave and Tom DeFreston coming out on the 29th of September in which we visit the icy tundra of the Arctic Circle on an adventure. Based on the true story of an arctic fox who walked from Norway to Canada in 76 days, a distance of 2,000 miles, this book takes us on a journey with Fox and Layla as their paths intertwine, as one crosses ice and snow over mountains and across frozen oceans, and the other finds her way to the mother who left her. Thanks Hatchet for the beautiful proof copy. The Ministry of Unladylike Activity by Robin Stevens out on the 29th of September is the start of a new Second World War mystery series from the author of Murder Most Unladylike. It's 1940 and Britain is at war and a secret arm of the British government called the Ministry of Unladylike Activity is training up spies. Enter Mei Wong, courageous, stubborn and desperate to help end the war so that she can go home to Hong Kong. Mei knows that she would make the perfect spy. After all, grown-ups always underestimate children like her. 
So when May and her friend Eric are turned away by the Ministry, they take matters into their own hands. Masquerading as evacuees, they travel to Elysium Hall, home to the very wealthy Verey family. There, they suspect that one of them is passing information on to Germany. If they can prove it, the Ministry will have to take them on. But there are more secrets there than they could ever have imagined. And then, someone is murdered. Big thanks Puffin for sending me one of the hundred numbered proof copies. Roll up, roll up, join the spectaculars by Jody Garnish out on the 29th of September at a magical boarding school with a theatrical twist. When three figures arrive at Harper's window in a flying canoe informing her that she is due to start her apprenticeship, Harper discovers she is a spectacular, a magical performer gifted with special powers from the stars. Harper is thrilled to be part of the Spectacular's travelling theatre and boarding school until everything is plunged into great danger. With her new friends Trick and Thief, Harper sets out to save her school. But while dreams come true at the Wondria, nightmares might just be lurking in the wings. Thanks Osborne for the proof copy. <laughs> Lastly, return to the world and writing of Tim Tilly in Witchstorm, an enchanting adventure story of storms, spells and the magic of the natural world out on the 29th of September. Will believes in witches and the stories he's grown up with. Most of all, he believes the tales of magical treasure hidden in the fens centuries ago. Treasure that he has to find to solve the mystery of his ma's disappearance. Then, in the eye of a storm, a witch arrives. She holds the key to finding the lost treasure, a powerful magical object that can summon storms. But someone else is searching for it too. But if it falls into the wrong hands, Will's beloved home could be destroyed and with it, his chances of ever finding his ma. Thanks Osborne for the proof copy. So these are the books I'm most excited about reading this month. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel below. As always, keep reading and I'll see you in the next video.